Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today I will talk about how uh, share some experience when we build the AI cloud. Actually, is we uh, provision and manage the TensorFlow cluster with OpenStack. So I will share some experience and some consideration when we're doing these things. Uh, this is not a step-by-step -step guide, but there are some, I uh, offer a lot of the options. Maybe you can uh, choose the one, maybe it fit you. And uh, I am Lian Peng from the uh, office of the CTO in EMC. And since I joined the EMC in 2011, I focus on the cloud computing things, not only OpenStack, but uh, including some uh, foundation research, for, some, for example, like the container, like authorization, like the hardware, all these things. And this is my co-presenter, Ethel Zhao. Welcome, my dear guests. <laughs> Voila. Welcome to Barcelona and our session. My name is Axeler. It's the first half of acceleration. We work previously, I work at the EMC OCTO. We work on a series of innovative cloud platforms such as, for example, OpenStack, scheduling, and the containers. We have done a lot of good work. Now let my colleague Lane to proceed. Thank you. OK. Uh, as you see, both uh, Ethelon and I is uh, working in the Dell EMC office of the CTO ARD team, and there are four directions. In, our, uh, in the ARD team, the fast data, hardware, software in, uh, infrastructure, then scientists. And of course, um, as uh, one team, we all four directions, we work closely. So you can see there is a team called the data scientists. Yeah, this is uh, some guys very good at maths and do a lot of uh, algorithm. And of course, you know, the, in, the, in the modern, uh, machine learning is based on the infrastructure. We have provide a lot of the calculation capability for them. So based on that, we are build, uh, manage our infrastructure with OpenStack for them. And we select the OpenStack uh, as our cloud management platform. The most important uh, consideration is because it's open. The open is very important for us because uh, you know, we are doing the infrastructure and research, so we need to add a lot of the hardware support in the, in the platform. So because OpenStack is open, so we can uh, add a new feature to it. We can customize it. So this is very important for me. I think this is the key, uh, key reason we use OpenStack rather than other platform. You know, uh, you, you know the relationship between us and VMware, but I still use OpenStack. And uh, we use OpenStack since the, since the access version very early before, but I'm not quite remember we start Dibro uh, access, but very clearly is uh, the first uh, we touch the OpenStack is in the Dibro uh, version. There is a meetup in Shanghai. I, I think it's the first or second meetup hold in Shanghai is about the Dibro. It's very easy to remember these things because, you know, the Dibro is a very famous RPG game. Maybe uh, you, you know that. So very easy to uh, remember this version. And also, it, it is the same parlance, a big pie apple in Chinese. So I remember uh, when we, after that meet, uh, meet up, we build our infrastructure with OpenStack. Maybe it's Dibro, maybe it's Access, but I, I cannot uh, quite make sure about that. OK, so we have talked. Uh, why we here? Why we talk about OpenStack? So the last thing is we uh, we dive back to our topic about AI. You know the AI research is uh, start very early. You know even before the computing inventing. That is because hmm? why you go? Oh, I don't. Yeah, you know the human uh, used uh, used to build a machine just like a human being. Uh, the like ourselves, like a uh, like human being. So the AI is quite a straightforward idea when we uh, invent something automatically. So, in, uh, but we're talking AI in this, in here, it's about the computing. So after the computer invent, the AI research is uh, birthed in, and born in the 1952. There was some uh, research there. So 
yeah, you can find some. Right. Right. Always jump to next next slide, and you can see uh, in those days some uh, some foundation research is happened in very early in the fifties. You can see the like, like the neutral level like like, like the uh, the logic and uh, some possibly reason these things is all born in the fifties, and be, uh, but. You can see it get the first boom from the 1952 to the 1956. That's because when we find something, we are very exciting and think it can do anything. But when we get deeper to understand what AI is, we found the limitation. So that the first winter is coming is uh, it is because we, we found a lot of things we cannot solve the problem. For example, the limitation of the computer power and uh, we also cannot uh, have some, some, we, we find the AI cannot solve many new problems in that days. But in the 80s, the AI is, is returned again uh, because the, the Japan, Japan has become very rich and they uh, raised the fifth generation computers, this concept. So the AI is back again in the 80s. But after that, the uh, in, in that and that, uh, in that time, now some something very interesting like the expert system has become. This is very in, important in the AI area because because of that, so the the uh, AI is working in many expert system, so it can solve very, very specified area. But after that, you know, after the uh, 1987, some some history recent so. Uh, the, the, the money is gone, so the AI is come, the second winter is coming. So you, uh, you, you, nearly, uh, you feel to hear some, uh, some story about AI in that times after that. But currently, in after 20 years development, AI topic suddenly hot again, like this, uh, this few years after uh, 10, 2010. So the, the AI come again. That because uh, some uh, other topic, not just in the machine learning, the topic in the cloud computing, the uh, large scale cluster, and the new hardware, and this thing uh, have uh, made, it seems that the limitation caused by the compute uh, capability is, is so partially. So the AI is hot again. In, 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 in other way, in, uh, in other side, the new uh, algorithm like the deep learning is, is uh, emerging. Comparing to the traditional uh, machine learning, the deep learning can get the benefit uh, by the, uh, uh, when we have the more data, so we can get the accuracy. So the deep learning happens, so we can use it. Uh, because uh, We also have cloud computing, so it works very well and can solve some problem. And the AlphaGo just beat the, hu uh, the top human player uh, in Go, so it, it made everyone is focused on this area again. And uh, behind the AlphaGo, there's, there is a framework called the uh, TensorFlow. Uh, at least Google claimed the AlphaGo is based is uh, is backed by the TensorFlow, but we, we, we don't have uh, exact, exactly it's true or not. But uh, it claimed by Google is based on the TensorFlow. And also, the TensorFlow is the backhand of the Google Brain. And it is said over 60 teams in Google is uh, using the TensorFlow in uh, multiple products. And TensorFlow itself, it he has uh, a lot of good uh, features. For example, it supports uh, different uh, isolation car. For example, it supports the GPU, FPGA, and CPU, TPU. And it's very easy to add the support the new hardware to the TensorFlow framework. And also, it supports different language when we writing the machine learning algorithm. For, for example, it supports the C++ uh, and the Python. So it offers the, the options to the machine, uh, the data scientists use their uh, language to write the algorithm. And also, it, it can it support the distribute training and, and serving. All these two uh, types of uh, is supporting the 
uh, test flow. And also it uh, embed a lot of typical toolkits for the data scientist. And of course, it, it is uh, naturally support the Docker and, and can run in deploying to the Kubernetes. So you can very easy to deploy the TensorFlow in the cloud, no matter it's AWS or GC or other cloud. So uh, because this, of the, this cool feature make it become the hottest deep learning framework once it open source. Uh, as I said before, uh, TensorFlow has several key advantages, make it become most attractive deep learning framework, such as the flexible for data scientists design the algorithm and adjust the, the algorithm and more. But from a system engineer's perspective, the last three, uh, last three uh, features are most interesting. Uh, so I will talk, talk to you uh, one by one. The first one is about the portable. The post portable is in two aspects. Uh, because it is well support Docker, so uh, it can very easy to put any kind of the cloud, any kind of the uh, your infrastructure. For example, you can run the TensorFlow just in your laptop, and also you can put it to a very large cloud. For example, you can run thousands of uh, thousands of machines in the AWS, it's very easy to do it. And another aspect is it, 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 can, it can support different hardware. First, there are two uh, concepts here. The first concept is called the ops. So we can add the new features by adding the new ops, which is sort by the operator. So for example, the, the metric app is one operator, for, uh, and we can add more different kind of operator and add a new feature to TensorFlow. And also it can, it's time by adding new kernel to ops. So currently it supports CPU and GPU, so we can add more in later. And you can see adding different the hardware to the TensorFlow can get a benefit uh, for the calculation capabilities. The diagram shows, uh, shows uh, a test in our lab. And the blue line is we uh, used four uh, E5266 V2, uh, V2 CPU, uh, four loads and four CPU, and get the, the uh, machine learning uh, iterators. And the red one is we just use one GPU called uh, uh, the, the model is Tesla, Tesla K40C. And this is not the best performance in GPU because some long issue because the tensor will, uh, will take a lot of the memory. So you know the GPU memory is, is, is very, very rare. So it only shows a 40% performance of GPU. So we can expect we can add more the hardware to the TensorFlow to, for different uh, kind of, of calculation. So we can get a better performance. And the second point is the TensorFlow connect the research and the production. <coughs> uh, this is uh, this type of machine learning called or, or, uh, offline machine learning model. So usually they have two cluster. The first cluster is doing the chaining. So we have a lot of data. We divide the data into test uh, validation and chaining uh, data set. Then after we chaining, we get a model. So the mo model can send to the serving cluster. The serving cluster is what is that, uh, what providing the service to the clients. For example, uh, if the model is an uh, image localization mo model, so if uh, in the it will be put to the serving cluster. So if I have an uh, image here, we can send the image to the uh, TensorFlow serving, and it will tell me what exactly in the in the image. So this is called the serving model, and you can find here. You, you know the the machine learning model is not uh not, 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 uh, just one time job. It, it can be updated. It can be updated by the new uh, feature, new adding new data to make make it more accuracy. So it can do in the running update. Um, what uh, most interesting in, interesting in TensorFlow is it support the distributed training and serving. <coughs> so the 
doing the GPU training is not very easy in the deep learning work. You, if you are um, familiar with the gradient descent, you know there is a global algorithm. So it's, it's very hard to do the uh, distribute. So th uh, this is an uh, image from the paper from uh, on in about uh, 2011 uh, from Jeptin, and it raised how, how to do the uh, gradient descent in the large scale uh, cluster. So it's very easy, easy to understand. So uh, just Im Im image, you have a lot of, of data. You have a very big model. So either you, you uh, search your data to a small subset, so put to the uh, to training. So this is the left-hand side. And that another option is you can sub your, your parameters to a sub, uh, subset. So all this one you, you send to a, a cluster called the parameter server to do the alternation. So if we, this is the image from the paper. If we make it to the, some production environment, so you can see it's the right-hand side. Side, it shows the components in TensorFlow. So we can see the worker is very similar to the model chain here. And if you send to the parameter server, also can be a cluster to do the uh, coordination. And if you look, uh, look deep into more to the TensorFlow, it will be more uh, complex. The worker will also communicate each other because it, it, uh, it organizes the data in TensorFlow with a graph. But, but you know, this is a open stack, so uh, we just keep the component uh, view is okay, I think. Because this is exactly how your cluster looks. Uh, so firstly, you have to have a cluster spec to TensorFlow, how, how many work nodes here, so uh, make them work each other, and also how to find the parameter server. So you can image this is as, uh, exactly uh, what you deploy to your cloud no matter it's a water machine or bare metal machine or container. So it, there should be five machines here, so it can, they, they, can, uh, they can be a cluster for a TensorFlow. This is a very, very small TensorFlow cluster. And uh, uh, in a production environment, it, it knows that such a five, five machine cluster, it, it, it cannot work. So in production environment, there will be thousands of the server need to be coordination. And, and uh, the luckily, the TensorFlow itself provides very good capability, uh, uh, scalability. So this is an image from the uh, Google paper. So you can see the, it gives the performance nearly the linear increment in, uh, when we increase the, the, uh, the hardware cost. So this is why uh, what, what we need OpenStack. So it, it, because we talk about there will be thousands of, of server there, so we have to, uh, we need to manage. So uh, we need some cloud plaf uh, manage platform for manage all these clusters. And as I said before, that we have already used OpenStack for providing the, uh, to manage our uh, cluster, our infrastructure. So it is a very easy option for us to use OpenStack to manage the TensorFlow cluster too. And so there is some uh, some con uh, cancellation uh, cancellation we have to make. So how about we uh, we we offer the capability to meet the machine learning requirement? How it can support the heterogeneous environment? Is it flexible for the extending the new feature? For example, if we need to uh, we need to add a new how hardware to the uh, to the cluster is it work? I, I mean the hardware not, not a new load, but maybe some uh, some car or some FPGA can we insert to the server can it be found and add to the TensorFlow cluster. And can we hide the plumbing for the system engineer and dance dance scientist to make the dance scientist not care much about the how the underlayer work? So I raised this question to Asala and he will continue the how we solve this in the OpenStack. <coughs> well, generally, OpenStack is the de facto management platform for the cloud. When TensorFlow runs on OpenStack, we can borrow a lot of the benefits from OpenStack and make it powerful. Generally, we have two options 
to integrate the TensorFlow to run on top of OpenStack. The first is Magnum. Magnum is the container as a service running on the platform of OpenStack. TensorFlow is relatively well packaged when running in container and in TensorFlow, so Magnum become a choice. Another option is the Sahara. Sahara manages the big data for OpenStack. Well, TensorFlow handles deep learning, and deep learning is also big data. So can we use Sahara to integrate the TensorFlow into OpenStack? Now first, we will dive into the Magnum. What is Magnum? Well, Magnum is a bridge that connects OpenStack to the world of container. Container is relatively a very fast developing technology in recent days. It provides well packaging for the application. It helps accelerate application delivery and helps to manage the cluster. There are various of very powerful cluster management tools for running containers. For example, the Kubernetes, the Mesos, the Swarm. Generally, Magnum provides a way to quickly and automatically provision those cluster management platforms like Kubernetes, Mesos, stuff. And it used the Bay and the Bay model to abstract away the heterogeneity of those different platforms. On the other hand, the Magnum can bridge the advanced features of OpenStack into the container world. For example, we can use Magnum to help us to manage the bare metal. We can run containers on bare metal, and we can use Magnum to help us to bridge cinder data volumes into the containers, and also auto-scaling. Well, this becomes handy because many applications can be relatively easy to be deployed and spin up when packaged in containers. And the magnums becomes very useful when we try to do things in this way. Let's take a look at the architecture of Magnum. Well, like many other services running on the OpenStack, it eventually relies on the six core components of OpenStack to run. On the top layer, the Magnum API accepts the user requests, parses them, and then parse them into the deeper layers for further processing. The conductor part is the heart of Magnum. It helps the orchestrate, deploy, and automate those container management platforms in the OpenStack. That is to say, to help deploy Kubernetes methods as well. If you deep dive into the code, you can see a lot of templates, heat templates, to help to do these things. Well, eventually and underlyingly, Magnum relies on heat to do the fundamental orchestration to install and deploy all these uh, Kubernetes methods cloud platforms. Remember that we mentioned Magnum is a very good tool to provision Kubernetes. <coughs> and uh, TensorFlow works relatively well when packaged into containers. And it has also officially declared the integration with Kubernetes. So our approach is straightforward. First, we have OpenStack. Then we run Magnum. And we use the Magnum to deploy the Kubernetes on top of OpenStack. Then in the end, we run TensorFlow on top of Kubernetes in containers. So in this way, we can quickly to piece together those ready-to-use components and spin up the TensorFlow. And we can use Magnum to expose the advanced features of OpenStack for those container stuff to use. The steps are pretty straightforward. For example, the first step, we need to prepare the images for the TensorFlow. For example, the TensorFlow worker nodes, the TensorFlow server nodes, and the TensorFlow parameter servers. On the next step, we write the cluster spec. In the cluster step spec, it's the way to specify how the training network should be organized in TensorFlow. And for the TensorFlow to be able to run on Kubernetes, we write the manifest 
which defines how the nodes should be organized on Kubernetes. And all things pieced together, we run them layer by layer, and we spin up the TensorFlow to train our service and service our models. There are a lot of online tutorials to train how to some uh, typical models in TensorFlow. For example, the inception model. <coughs> well, and the option always have good size and bad size. There are several good size and bad things for the TensorFlow to be able to run on OpenStack in the MegaNum way. The good size are the container, Kubernetes, and all the other components are relatively mature and ready to use. We don't need to write any shim layer to connect the things and make them ready to work. And also, because of we are using the MagNum, it can expose features from OpenStack into the containers. And because we are, of we are using the Kubernetes, it also brings us some benefits. Well, the bad sides are actually obvious. We are running TensorFlow inside of Kubernetes. Actually, rather than running them inside of OpenStack, this is not OpenStack native. OpenStack knows nothing about the TensorFlow. And it doesn't have the direct control into the TensorFlow cluster. So those layers are actually separated, tr transparent of each other. The deployment is fragmented. It is not a unified and integrated deployment solution. Also, there are still a few additional pros and cons for using TensorFlow with Magnum. The good sides come from mostly from the Kubernetes. Well, Kubernetes provide us some handy features for scheduling, such as the node selector and the node affinity. Basically, they let us to define how we should favor some type of nodes over the others. The use case is a typical one is that uh, we try to use GPU over CPU, and uh, for TensorFlow, this is important. And uh, later, it becomes important when we try to build some advanced scheduling technologies on top of that. Another thing is the rolling upgrade. Well, Container is very famous for its atomic city to package images. Well, it can atomically to spin up or shut down a container. And the Kubernetes, based on this, provide commands and tools, tools to, for rolling upgrade. You can input a command and upgrade the container version to a new one. It becomes handy for upgrading the data learning models. When we have trained a new model, we can tag the model with a new version and use the magnum to atomically upgrade that to make the new model active and online without the interruption of the production service. The next thing is auto-scaling. Well, both OpenStack and Kubernetes provide their own technology stack to do monitoring. In OpenStack, we can use Noki Monosaka Solometer. It's basically the infrastructure level. And in Kubernetes, we can use monitoring tools like Hipster and InfluxDB. They will handle the data collection and the storage. It's basically targeting on the container layer. And when the metrics are collected and the certain rules are triggered, we can scale up or scale down the containers or the virtual machines. Well, Magnum is equipped with the commands for you to scale up and down the, for example, Kubernetes nodes or the virtual machines it has deployed. And in Kubernetes, it provides commands to scale up and down the containers. For TensorFlow, because of those help, TensorFlow can be automatically, auto, can be equipped with auto-scaling. Well, those are the benefits. And uh, next, in the new section, we talk about the Sahara approach. Sahara is the platform in OpenStack to manage big data natively. Well, Sahara used the plugin system to abstract away the differences from different um, data platforms. 
It provides the quickly provisioning and manage for, for example, for Hadoop, for Honorworks, for Spark, for Cloud Impla, and many else. It also is equipped with an EDP, Elastic Data Processing Framework, where the user can define how the data should be uh, processed and stored step by step, composing the whole workflow. In the end, because it is OpenStack native, it also provides a native Horizon UI for the convenience of users. Well, let's take a look of the architecture of Sahara. Well, basically, you will find many, many services in OpenStack share the similar, uh, component, uh, similar architectures. In the API layer, Sahara takes into the user requests and pass them to the provisioning engine or EDP engine. Provisioning engine is used to, tr to deploy and track uh, the provisioning of those big data clusters, like uh, what Magnum does in the conductor. And uh, the EDP engine is used to track and monitor the data processing workflow. Also, there are other components like the Sahara pages. This works with the Horizon UI to provide the uh, user interface. There are several pros and cons to integrate uh, TensorFlow by the Sahara way. Well, the pros are like, uh, because this is OpenStack native, we have the native approach to integrate deep learning into the control of OpenStack. Because of Sahara, this is a fully integrated and uh, unified interface, and the EDP engine can help us to define the workflows for the deep learning for TensorFlow. And there are other benefits come from Sahara. For example, Sahara has its own enhanced scheduling, scaling, and storage management. And the integration with UI, we can all borrow them into the TensorFlow. But the most importantly, the beta sides are pretty uh, straightforward and obvious. Well, because we need to implement the plugin to be able to use TensorFlow in Sahara. For now, the, there are little community support for this, and the, to implement the plugin is no easy work. And compared to Kubernetes, because we are not using Kubernetes here, we cannot borrow the benefits from Kubernetes, such as the scheduling, rolling upgrade, and so on. So there are always a lot of options, and eventually we have chosen the Magnum approach. The main reason is that um, every component in this approach is well mature and ready to use. We are, every layer has provided their mechanism for being further extended. For example, to write some plugins or write new schedulers. And uh, basically, when we try to run a multi-tenant environment for the TensorFlow, the Magnum and the OpenStack together are basically enough. This is a good approach. But further, we have a question. So does it, uh, uh, is it enough for to solve every problem? Now let us invite my colleague Lane to proceed. Maybe we have a, uh, maybe we have a little more time. So the, f uh, the first uh, problem is, so I've said before, um, we need to add a lot of the hardware to the, this Teraflow cluster. And as you know, uh, the OpenStack is basically is based on the water machine, and not all those hardware support the water machine. So we have uh, think some some solution for that. So uh, the temporary solution is we uh, build a hybrid environment, which is bare metal and modularization uh, in the same environment. And so so this is uh, we leverage the ironic. Uh, as the bare metal, so in our cluster, we have the some some components in the bare metal which we use the hardware hardware there. For example, the GPU or the isolation car, we all in this uh, bare metal environment. And also there is some uh, water machine there, which is uh, for the control load, which uh, require the HA and these things. And ironic is very 
uh, interesting project. It provides a skin to the bare metal, so it can make the bare metal itself can work exactly like the water machine in OpenStack provide the fl flexible. So, and there are some key components that like uh, any other uh, OpenStack uh, project. And the most interesting one is the lower driver. So with that, you can uh, you can make the ironic bare metal as the just like what, uh, what like the KVM with where you, you can use the lower to manage the both the uh, bare metal and water like uh, water machine. And we found uh, there is a session in Tokyo summit called the uh, uh, Magellan and Sahara are able to work on a uh, hybrid environment contain bare metal and water machine. And this is, uh, it, he raised the, uh, is that the same, uh, same uh, pro, uh, question as us? So we did this, this session, so it's very really good for us to leverage it. So this is the, the first one, is uh, how about to solve the how we have things in water hydration. And the second thing is, is uh, we call it the two-level scheduling and sca uh, scaling. So if you dip a little inside the solution, uh, we built, they are, uh, they are in two environments. The first part is the bare metal, which is we use the lower for, uh, to call the ironic to provision the McGlum in bare metal. Then the uh, McGlum will, uh, will provision the, cube, uh, the tail flow with inside the docker, so there are two parts. The first part is the bare metal, the second part is the container. So like any other the, uh, multiple con control play problem, we have to solve the, the barrier between the environment. For example, in the bare metal side, you, uh, it, doesn't, it didn't know uh, how the application looks like, so it, it cannot know the status, is it, uh, is, uh, is it need the uh, hardware function or, or then. And in the container, it cannot control to scale the, the machines. So we have built some, something for them. So firstly, we have to pass through the hardware functions to the container. So the container can know, uh, so in the Kubernetes, we can know uh, this machine has GPU and or has the offload car. And also, we have to uh, notify the, the uh, in the container side, we have notified the, the bare metal. Now I, I need some more capability. Please help me to scale out, and uh, and, and please help me to uh, build more the bare metal machine so we can put the Docker uh, container into that machine and leverage the things. So in, in need to do some um, some uh, attention for in our jobs. And also we found some very new chance uh, not uh, not, not far ago. It's just say. They see the Melantis they collaborate with the Intel and Google to enable the OpenStack on the Kubelet. It, it said they, they will initial a project, uh, build the OpenStack upon the Kubelet. So the problem is become, is OpenStack central or Kubelet central? You know, we are using the OpenStack and using the Kubelet. So we are very interested in this project. So we, we can imagine if we have this project, so uh, we, we, we can just deploy, it. we have the Kubelet is Kubelet, so we can just deploy our TensorFlow in the Kubelet, and some, and also we can create OpenStack as a one and another application. So we can put some of my component in that OpenStack and use something like Query to connect the path together. It will be very interesting, but a very, very, or at least myself is very interesting to this project. Okay, so okay, any question? Okay, so. Uh, typically, uh, how many container instances uh, are running on a single host? Oh, um, this is a good question. Actually, if you, you, uh, you're asking in our environment, it's not very big environment. You know, we just a research team, so we are doing our job there. So not, not many, but it can be maybe a uh, lot more than 100. Yeah, that, that depends on your hardware. How about your, your machine? How many vCPU in your machine? So it's very hard to say which is, uh, how, how many is better.
Okay. Uh, I remember EMC has a rotus, right? Uh, Albert. Okay, so it seems they are with some pressure to attend this uh, 55 here. <laughs> if, uh, 55. Okay, <laughs> okay. so I get another. Uh, 19. Yeah, 19. Okay, congratulations. Oh, 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 55. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> 55. <laughs> oh, oh my, my, my fault. <laughs> That's my fault. Sorry. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Hmm? Can you come here to take a photo? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>